It's a sunny morning in Lagos, Nigeria, and we have a very rare opportunity today to sit down with a man who has secured a place for himself in the history books as one of Nigeria's fastest men. Not only is he a star, a legend in the making, but he also happens to be a Man United fan. Let's meet Sheye Ogunlewe. Sheye Gunlewe, the last child of Ade Sheye and Kemi Gunlewe, was born in Lagos, Nigeria on August 30, 1991. It was in his home country that athletics chose him. I started running when I was in primary school and I moved to secondary school, I started running there as well. In 2007, I ran at this event at the University of Lagos and this lady approached me. I ran the 200 from lane one and I won. To me, it was nothing. It was just one of the other races that we went for. And this lady came to me and said, wow, that you ran that race like a professional. Like, you ran from lane one, you executed the bend properly, and you ran properly, so you should come and compete for Nigeria at the World Secondary School Championships in France. So I went to France, I won in France. I went to Ireland to school. I won the Irish School Championships back to back in 2009, 2010. But people used to tell me, like, I used to train in a club in Ireland called Selbridge, and everyone used to tell me, oh yeah, you're quick, you're quick, you're quick. But in my mind, I didn't, I didn't really think I was, I was just running for fun. Until I qualified for the World Juniors in 2010, for the 200 meters. Like, I, I qualified for events that people train for, and I never used to train. I just used to train on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, just like everybody, other person. So after that, I decided that, okay, cool. Like, I think I could do this. A guy came up to me one day and was like, you know you could do this professionally and make money out of it and become very good. I was like, okay, cool, I'll give you a shot. And I moved to England, got coach, and the rest is history. Multi-talented with a fervent love for sport, he believes sprinting happened to him. I watch football more than I watch track. I know everything about football. I thought I was gonna be a footballer at one point in time. But as I said, this career of mine has taken me further than football. I didn't compete for Nigeria in 2007 in football. If I did, maybe I'll be a footballer now. I competed for Nigeria at track and field, so that has brought me to where I am right now. With a strong belief in his talent, Sheye excelled as he represented his country across the globe. Walking out in front of 50, 60,000 people, everyone screaming, you know, the atmosphere, rubbing shoulders with the best of the best, Usain Bolt, Justin Gatlin, Andy Murray, Serena Williams. Name them, they're all there, you know, sharing the Olympic village with them, walking on the streets with people that you, you watch on TV and you dream about, you know, of becoming. So I think the Olympics was the biggest I had of my career so far. In 2015, Sheye Gunlewe emerged as Nigeria's newest star as he stunned a strong field in the men's 100-meter final at the national championships in Wari to become Nigeria's fastest man with a time of 10.19 seconds. It was something that I always wanted to do because I remember when I started in 2011, my first race, I didn't even make the final in Nigeria. And I just kept on believing. I said, okay, cool, just keep on thriving, keep on working hard, and one day you will become the best in this country. So it was, it was overwhelming because it was one of my career goals, you know, to become one of the best. Like, you have to be the best in your country to be able to be the best in, in the other parts of the world, in Africa and world stage. So it felt great. If it was, words cannot describe how I felt that day. I felt like I, I had accomplished something. But on the other hand, when I did that, my goals changed immediately. You know, I didn't want to be known as only Nigeria's quickest man wanted to be one of the best in Africa and hopefully one of the best in the world. Although Sheye enrolled in the University of Essex to further his studies, it is there that his most career-defining development took place. The move to the UK defined into my career because that was where I found my first proper coach, the person of Prince Duai, who is like a father to me now. And I talk to him regularly, I spoke to him last week. And he taught me the basics of sprinting. You know, taught me the basics of how to use a gym, 
you know, all those minor things. And we, we went through a lot together. You know, I started from 10 9 with, with him, and we went down to 10 3 in, in, in two years. So without him, to be honest, I might not be where I am today. So I must give thanks to him. He's been a lovely man, he's been a father figure to me. To be honest, I didn't go to the UK to go and run. I went to school. I went to the University of Essex to study law and politics. And on the side, I just said, all right, cool. I might as well do track because I'm good at it. So I didn't have a social life. I didn't go out. It was boring. But I used to go to training every night. Tuesday, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I remember, and Saturday mornings. I feel the facilities are big, uh, good, better. I feel they'll be able to stay here because the weather is conducive, it's warm, it's nice. You could maximize things you want to do. So yeah, I feel that is a big hindrance in sport development in Nigeria. With several highlights and a growing portfolio of success, we are yet to see Shea return to the 200-meter event after his fourth finish at the 2014 Commonwealth Games. Oh yeah, um, going back to that, that was a very funny event to be honest. I went to the Commonwealth Games 2014 <laughs> not to run the 200. I was there as a sub for the relay because that was when that was my first international event for Nigeria. And this one of the Nigerian officials came to me and said, "Oh yeah." There's no one registered for the 200. Would you like to do it? I was like, yeah, why not? Like, I have nothing to lose. Even if I was not here to run the 200, I was not training this year to run the 200. That was my first 200 meter race that year. So I just went out there. It was scary, to be honest. I won't lie to you. Like, because I didn't know what to expect. Because I had not run the 200. And I went out there, I came fourth. It was, it was hard. I won't lie to you. <laughs> it was so hard. And yeah, looking back at it, um, it was it was a good experience, you know, going out there to like I didn't I was not scared to run the 200. I didn't chicken out. I was going to actually say no, I'm not doing it. But I just did it, and training has changed since then. You know, I was still young, I was still upcoming. I was still I think my PB then was like 10, 23, 10, 3. Look, it was a good experience. And yeah, like I've gotten stronger, I've learned sport more, I'm more technical, I understand the sport better, I've improved. So four years ago is not now, and like I know I think I, I, would, I would do better than fourth place in the heat if I go to the Commonwealth Games this year. As Shea sets himself up to conquer the world, he is undoubtedly in good company with his fellow Nigerian athletes. What Blessing has done for the sport, you know, has been great. She had the African record. We must, we must also remember that she's been the figurehead of Nigerian track and field. She's put her face on the map, you know, as one of the top sprinters in the world. And everybody wants to be that person, you know, everybody wants to be the best. And Blessing has inspired me. She's my very good friend. You know, I talk to her once in a while when I see her, you know, we share ideas and we talk about different things. And hopefully one day I could do the things that she's done because she's done remarkably well, if, you know, and hopefully she can do better. You know, there, there are a few top Nigerian athletes who are coming up, who are doing great things. Divano Duduri is one of them. He's doing fantastic well. Obina Metu is still there. Ogo Gwena Aguero is still there. There are a few young guys coming up. There are a few people, you know, to watch out for. And it's just, it's, it is positive rivalry. It's not beef or anything. We just go out there, try and do our best for the country, push each other. You know, if one person runs fast and someone pegs along, you run quicker. The other person runs fast, someone pegs it long, you run quicker. So it's all positive energy. 2020 drawing nearer, one wonders whether the pressure of qualifying and performing well in the next Summer Olympics has started building. There's a quote that says, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. <laughs> I think, yeah. So, yeah, the preparation, you know, our athletes actually going out to represent the country. Are people putting on the country's colors saying, okay, I'm wearing the colors of Nigeria and I'm going to do everything for Nigeria. I don't think so. You know, I think they're just going out there just to run because they have nothing to lose. If you don't invest in me, you cannot ask me any questions. You know, if you invest in me, you can ask me questions. So there has to be accountability, you know. And I feel everybody went out there to do their best. Unfortunately, their best was not enough. Hence why we did not get any medals. And hopefully in the long run, we learn 
and we make it better. But as for me, I can only talk for myself. I'll do my best and hopefully one day I could make my family, my country proud. There seems to be a love affair between some of the world's fastest men and the Manchester United Football Club that one wouldn't be far off to assume there was an unwritten rule about it. Um, you're saying both. I know he's a Manchester United fan, but we've not actually spoken about Manchester United together. The last time I saw him was outside a bar in Rio. And there was not, we didn't have any opportunity to talk about Manchester United. It would have been a weird situation, me talking about Manchester United at that point in time. But hopefully when next I see him, I can share ideas. I could add him to my Manchester United group. <laughs> and yeah, we could talk about Manchester United. I'm sure he's a loving Manchester United fan. Anybody that's trying to do whatever they want to do, be it sports, be it marketing, be it finance, be it business, just put your mind to it. You know, set your goals and go for 110%. Don't let anyone discourage you. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because everything comes from within, you know. If you tell yourself you can do it, go out and do it and prove to the world that you can do it. And there you have it. He's certainly one to keep our eyes on. And as we count down to the championships, the Olympics, the Commonwealth Games, there's so many opportunities for us to see the star shine and we are rooting for him. From me, Miss Vimbai, bye-bye.